Welcome to A Woman's Brew, where women talk about beer. In today's episode, our beers are inspired by three films whose main tenuous link between them are three of Britain's most favourite ice cream cones. I'm Joanne and this is Tori. Hello. And we're two beer-loving women on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer. Come join us. I'm quite excited for these beers, you know. Me too. Um, so we are doing, I mean, I'll let you say what we're doing. I'll, yeah, I'll let you announce that. <laughs> we, are, we are drinking Beer Inc.'s Cornetto Trilogy of Beers. Um, I've got the box here. So the beers are not in it, obviously, because they're in the fridge. I, this box is also really cool that they came it's in. Cool. So if you, they, I think they're still available. So, um, I mean, it depends on when we put this episode out, I suppose. But um so the three there's three beers because it's a trilogy and they came in this cool carry box if you got them all together um and the side is printed like a cornetto because they're inspired by cornetto if you don't know what um, a cornetto is basically it's a oh, waffle yeah, cone with ice cream americans don't know what a cornetto is <laughs> it's it's it's, it's a, a the cone it's, it's a waffle cone design yeah. on the side for any americans listening. yeah and then um so we'll get into the bit uh, so it's based on some of Simon Pegg's films um so we'll get into what that but it, it's got a carry handle on the top and when you put your hand inside it, it there's a drawing on the side so it makes your hand look like you're a zombie I didn't even to be yeah, honest did I didn't even know that I, I I saw it but I didn't actually notice that yeah. that when you held it that's what it looked like yeah, obviously I was look like looking at myself holding it I didn't even uh, think of it that's funny yeah. I like that yeah <laughs> and um, and then on the back, it has got the three different beers. So today we are going to be drinking the Greater Good, which is a vanilla and hazelnut white stout. Oh, that's exciting. Um, and that one goes with hot fuzz. Uh, then we're going to have, oh, well, we may not drink them in this order. We're drinking whatever order we want. But this is the order they are on the back of the box. Then there's You've Got Red On You, um, which is a strawberry sour. And that's for Shaun of the Dead. And then there's what the what the beep <laughs> does WTF mean, uh, which is a mint chocolate chip stout, and that uh, goes with World's End. World's End, I think, is my favourite out of all three films. Have you seen Ooh, all three films? I have seen. I was going to ask you actually. Had you seen yeah. all three? I've seen all three films. Yep. And I think I enjoyed World's End. It was actually my least favourite. All of really? them. Really? Personally. I think, and, and this is going to sound biased, why I'm saying we should drink we should drink them in the order that just coincidentally happens to be my favourite. Okay. Only because that's the order that the films came out in. That's the only reason okay. I say that. Okay. Uh, I think we should drink them in um, the Shaun of the Dead, the yep. You've Got Red on You, then the Greater Good, then the, what the F does, what the, yeah. the, the WTF mean. Um, I think because that's the, that's the order that the films came out in. So I think that's the order we should drink them in. But that's coincidentally my favourite. I think- Shaun of the Dead. I th- yeah, Shaun of the Dead's my favorite. Mm. Easy, like, my, like for me, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Zombies, no-brainer. <laughs> um, that is my favorite. Didn't like, even hands plan down. That. <laughs> Didn't plan that. Just happened. Um, but I feel like World's End is surprisingly. Uh, I think he gets a bad rap. Like, I think people don't tend to, like that's not the one that people oh, tend I to feel... talk about out of the trilogy. I think it's either Hot Fuzz or Shaun of the Dead that you hear the most of. Oh really? I feel like you don't, from my from my I feel like you standpoint. don't hear a lot about hot fuzz. But I think I, also I think it's think underrated. I, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think World's End is quite specifically British <laughs> in its comedy. I feel like that's why it's yes. why it's not so well known. Maybe. I would but um, I would make the argument and we are not a film podcast, but no, we now I kind of wish we were. <laughs> um I would make the argument that from from my my viewpoint of it, I think it's because Simon Pegg. So these all star, you know, Simon Pegg as the as the lead role and Nick Nick Frost as his yep. co star. Um, I would argue that Simon Pegg in World's End plays a very different character. To oh yeah, how he's not like Simon Pegg. No, but it's very different to the typical character that Simon Pegg is like oh. plays for himself yeah <laughs> I would argue that um he yeah he's not likable at all but I mean he's not 
you kind of like root for him, but also you're like, oh, but he's he's also it's like a better call soul. You're like he's a shithead, but also like he's he's our main he's our he's our main hero we have to like him sort of thing um and I think that's maybe like because it's just so different maybe for some people that's jar like a little oh. bit too jarring to get in I think that's great because like you're seeing a different side of Simon Pegg because it's like, true. I, I think people have good. like I think people have an idea of what they think Simon Pegg it, like it's just like oh it's a yeah. Simon Pegg character no actually he's a very versatile actor he is, yeah I also really enjoy him as um as Scotty in the Star Trek films. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just enjoy and, Simon um, Pegg generally as an actor. I think was it he was in Ready Player One, I think, as well. Yes, he was. And that was a very different, I think, what he normally yeah. plays as well. Um, um, but I, I that's just my argument for it. out of the three, I feel like that is the most opposite to his character. So maybe for some people it didn't. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Either that or I think it was released quite it was released almost like a decade after yeah. sort of Shaun of the Dead as well. And I think by that point, Shaun of the Dead was already such a cult classic favourite. And then sort of Hot Fuzz didn't come out too much after Shaun of the Dead. So I think those two kind of already had that like build up yeah. by the time yeah. World's End came out. But um, yeah, I think I liked World's End. It's just those were the, the order that they came out. And I think actually arguably was was my fave. But I do feel like oh, World's End, uh, Hot Fuzz doesn't get... Oh no, that doesn't nearly get enough recognition yeah, no, for how good it is as well. Um, um, so I would I, just say the Cornetto trilogy. Also, what I thought was interesting, it's not. So this is called obviously the Cornetto trilogy here, but it's also known as Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy or the Blood and Ice Cream trilogy. Oh, did you know that? I didn't know it was called the Blood and Ice Cream trilogy. No. Anyways, carry on with what you were about to say, but um, I was just like to set the scene on that. I'm gonna. Oh, throw I that had out. I so I was thinking about what order we were gonna drink these in, and I knew you were gonna say that, and I think that is the right order to drink them in. Um, but cho- mint chocolate chips my least favorite, and strawberries my favorite. And we're gonna get drink that one first. What you should do is don't drink all of it. Yeah, I'll have to just save a it little bit, and then, then save it for the end to go all top. And I might have to, and it's my favorite cornetto flavor as well. So like, we we can well we can I'll drink it, it in, in what, freezer. Well we can drink it in whatever order you want. I would I, I would I, I agree. To I will in that order. I will take one for the team and and we'll eat my to be fair, one last. To be fair, it's my it's my turn of the rotation. It is because yeah. because vocation yeah. chocolate box bounty technically I think was meant to be the last one because yeah. I was the, it, not, not that it was meant to be but it was the last in the box and we yeah. were going to go through yeah. and you were like. I don't want I don't to drink, want to drink last. <laughs> also, also, I will point out that the Snickers one was the best one. So I'm glad that we left that one till last. No, but what I'm saying is we we reversed the order on that because you wanted to finish on a mm. nice note. So this yeah. is my my turn. I like mint chocolate yeah, chip. I was, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> I like mint chocolate fine. chip. And I would argue out of all the flaves, minus the fact that um, I like a white stout. So like, uh, yeah. irregardless of the, of the style it is, I would say like mint chocolate chip in terms of ice cream out of all of these flavors is like probably my favorite. Although I do like hazelnut, but for me, this is the big win. (laughs) I'll allow it. Also, I don't think we've actually said we've been talking about this, but I don't think we've made this clear to the listeners. So we've got the beer and we've got the matching Cornetto and we're going to be eating the matching Cornetto with the beer. We are. I don't think we actually said that. Just because like, why not? First we went to number two. We found individual Cornettos. Individual I was Cornetto. very excited because I didn't know if we were going to be able to do it. I didn't want to have to buy whole boxes of Cornettos. Yeah, yeah. We managed to do it. We did it. Um, and then you managed to also transport them home like two I hours. I did because so... we were going to do it. We were together and we were going to do it together and we ran out of time. I managed to get them home in my little um, packed lunch bag that's insulated. <laughs> and they're fine. They're in the freezer. We are, oh, I guess we'll find out if they're not fine. Oh, yeah, we'll find, we're out, find very out very quickly. Um, before we sort of kick things off, I just I, I've got some fun facts about sort of the film Love fun trilogy. Facts. So some fun, some I mean maybe not fun for everyone, but I thought they were interesting or things to at least highlight if you're not maybe not familiar or maybe if you are. Um, so obviously we already covered that they're kind of that you, you cover the film Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World World's End, um, and it's you know Simon Pegg people will know it as like Simon Pegg and Nick Frost films um so from what you from all the googling that I've kind of done just to see if there was any further things I was missing here um 
the three films don't actually share storyline or characters and i actually found in my in my googling that uh, some lore even suggests they're like not even set in the same universe like Ooh. full stop it's it's yeah. not it's not even the same universe of things i guess if you're a comic book person that would make sense to you if you're like uh if, if you're not you're probably like it's all on earth what are you talking about <laughs> um <laughs> it, the overall themes are just love and growing up that that's the the real themes that are set be- between them um the red in, in this in in everything is kind of picked to represent the blood of Shaun of the dead so what i've seen this is what i've got from again this is all based on just various google searching that i've done here but um the red was uh, they picked the red cornetto to represent the blood in Shaun of the dead the blue was picked to represent the police in hot fuzz and the green was meant to signify little green men slash sci-fi theme for world's end which we'll get into i'll give a kind of brief synopsis as well before we actually drink the beer so if you or, or while we drink it so you kind of if you haven't seen it you still feel somewhat included in that and that will all make sense as we go along um all the all the characters or um many of the featured characters were support were, were featured in at least kind of two of the three films but martin freeman was one of the characters that that popped back up again as as a supporting role in all three of the films when well, the so, actors not the character yeah sorry the actors not the character yeah martin different? freeman yeah yeah they, they popped up um they pop up kind of in the different films but mm. as different characters but yeah martin freeman was one of the ones that were in all all three so that was that was fun and what i thought was really interesting was why why the cornettos so when i was searching it seemed to suggest that the red cornetto was used which was used as one of the hang the cures um mentioned in in shawn the dead for uh, i believe it was nick frost's character um they af- after that they received free cornetto ice creams at the after party for the film premiere and because of that, they decided to try it again for the next film, Hot Fuzz, to see if they could receive more Cornettos. Apparently it failed, didn't work. No. Uh, but then because of that, so the co-writer along with uh, Simon Pegg was Edgar Wright. Um, they kind of were like, I guess we'll try, like it, it kind of had become a theme and they kind of joked about that being the theme that tied everything together. So I'm guessing that's also why they sort of brought it back in World's End and it became the Cornetto trilogy. Because yeah, he, he basically joked that it was comparable to the French film, The Three Colours, um, which it's, I Googled what that was and it sounded, I'm not going to go here now with it because it's not really relevant, but it sounded a lot more intense than these yeah. three. It was very like a lot more like political and everything else that maybe these three films were. Uh, but yeah, Ed- Edgar Wright kind of joked about it being comparable to that. And um, uh, so just back to about the actors being featured in the um, in numerous films, basically Edgar Wright joked that anyone that appeared in the first two films of World's End, uh, uh, the first two films would appear in World's End because it was the final in the trilogy. So what was interesting was... Um, the actors that played the first two zombies in Shaun of the Dead were were in it, for example, as different people, obviously, but but they they popped up in there as well. So just like really That's interesting, fun. the cameos that popped up and uh, the the background as to why Cornettos, it was it was a lot of interesting stuff. So lots of fun facts. Cornettos. Of you. <laughs> they wanted why. free Cornettos, really. Yeah, apparently <laughs> it's something that I think in in my research so like edgar wright did actually use cornettos as a hangover cure oh, or really? something and so that's why he gave it to the character ed in shot of the dead and uh, how do you think that a cornetto works as a hangover cure i don't know the sugar do you think maybe it's the sugar boost maybe and maybe it's just like it's because it's ice cream it's, it's just a bit a little bit like lighter as well it's just cr- like the creaminess of just I don't I feel know. Like, see, I feel like if I'm hungover, I don't want anything like too milky. Maybe. But then I also well, think I there's kind it's of enough like plainness sugary, in there as well that it's, it's not easy eating, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, know like... if I, I don't know if I agree with the science on this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, that's just the law of, of what he potentially found. Maybe he didn't, and someone's just. A few websites yeah. have referenced that just through jokes that he's made, and because a lot of the stuff it was like he joked about this, <laughs> and this, and this is why they did this because of this joke. So I'd um, say that we could, because your mum bought us those hangover cure things back from the US. I, I don't. <laughs> so, so really Tama, I, I will. I no, no. I, I'll clarify. She didn't buy those for us. They came in one of our boxes <laughs> that we had ordered. Oh, did they? 
yes they gave in one of the boxes that we had ordered um but she had given it to me sort of like set it was in like a separate (laughs) container and I was like what is this and she's like it's yours and I was like I thought it was like dad's or something and he was like nah he's like I don't need that like it does look like shoe polish or something when you just look at it or an air freshener I was very, very confused. Uh, but also, I don't really get hangovers, so. Well, I mean, if I felt like getting really hammered, which I don't, because I don't want to feel horrible the next day, we could do an episode where we try and see if a Cornetto is actually a good hangover cure with that weird hangover stuff that your mum brought over for us. It's hard because, again, yeah. I don't really get hangovers, so I feel like I'd yeah. have to go. She's super annoying that way, listen. Really hard yeah. in the paint for Rick that. and I get super annoyed about it. <laughs> I could get, like, Rick to try it out there and tell me how it goes. I did, I basically said, this is yours, and it was like, oh, cheers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's not used it yet, but, um, but yeah, so I thought that would just set the scene, and I think we can kind of start with Shaun of the Dead. Uh, we'll go get our corn- Cornettos, but before we go get our Cornettos, I'll give you the really brief synopsis of Sean of the Dead, which is Sean is a 30 something loser with a dull, easy existence. When he's not working at the electronics store, he lives with his slovenly best friend, Ed, in a small flat on the outskirts of London. The only unpredictable element in his life is his girlfriend, Liz, who desperately wishes for Sean to grow up and be a man. When the town is inexplicably overrun with zombies, Sean must rise to the occasion and protect both Liz and his mother. And if that doesn't tease the the senses to want to go watch it uh hopefully this combo will so we're gonna go get our cornettos all right so we've got our we've got our cornettos we've got our beer um before we pour this the one thing that i wanted to point out that i really liked so if you're not if watch you've the not video had a cornetto <laughs> um when you so the and i don't know whether they cone <laughs> cone ice creams that you can buy in the us i don't know if they if they, do, they this, do, I do think they? they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to explain it in case you've never seen it. So cone ice cream, it's got a paper wrapper that goes all the way around. And then on top is a piece of cardboard that kind of protects the top of the ice cream. Um, what I really like about this is like the little details in this in these beers. On top of the cans is a round sticker with the name oh. of the bit. So it looks like probably what the pump clip would look like if you got this in a pub. Um, just like the lid of a cornetto like it's brilliant i love it not even it's it's the lid but it so it looks like the lid of a cornetto but the yeah. artwork actually on it looks like the top like of a cornetto the top of a cornetto take the paper off precariously yeah, yeah. uh so mine i don't know it doesn't look quite as nice as their photo oh yeah <laughs> if you're watching the video it's not quite as like lovely yeah. layers of the strawberry around yeah. like dispersed between the vanilla but that's a good like, photo they had to get like they, i wonder if they went through like a different like several different cornettos until they got the nicest one or, or like if, it's, if they did it and they've just <laughs> yeah it's like where do you find stock photos of cornetto tops <laughs> maybe they've just like met like built their own ice cream right right <laughs> assembled their own okay right i'm gonna pour this beer cool oh straight out of the can it smells proper strawberry i also really appreciated the lid the lid of the yeah i thought situation. that was really clever you know what Okay, so if you watched the video a minute ago, I just held up the uh, actual top of the Cornetto to the yeah. um, paper top and they didn't really look alike because uh, this one, the strawberry, looks a little bit lighter. But weirdly, I would say it's not... This doesn't really do it that much dust, this, my lighting, so it look, like it looks far more orange, I think. Um, but there's... When it sat down, it almost looked very similar to what the lightness of the strawberry oh. in my cornetto because <laughs> there's almost like a little like pinkness to the orange so it's yeah. mostly orange but i would say there's almost like a like a little pink highlight to it and i'd say that like pink highlight almost matched a little bit of like the real cornetto <laughs> the real cornetto strawberry which is not actually bright red <laughs> no um, it smells very fruity yeah mine's got a lovely thick head on it It's got a little bit of funk to it. I'd say there is an element of like jamminess, but I don't know yeah. if that's just like because it's in my head that that's what that fruity flavour should be attributed to, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
No, it's definitely jammy. All right, I'm going to drive it. It's weird um, in the sense of I'm trying to like put it into words, the first sip anyways. And it's like, it feels like it's going to be really sharp when you take the first sip. But then that's almost like immediately, like it sort of like hits you and you think, oh, this whole mouthful is going to be really like just tart yeah. to the back of the throat. And it, it, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to describe it because I think it's just, it's really nice. It's just not, I expected, I took a sip and I was like, oh, that's going to be really sharp and lasting. But it goes like quite quickly and is still, I think that if you didn't like sours or as much, you could still enjoy this beer. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's a proper like gateway sour. Like it's not, I mean, you know, obviously I always preface this because we are sour sour lovers so our tolerance for sour mm. is quite different but yeah I think it's quite I think it's an entry level sour I think you could definitely be like don't really like sours but I'll give this a go I really I quite like it I to be fair like the sweetness... sour lasts longer the more the more sips you have of it the more the sour lasts but like that first one it was like sharp and then you were like a sharp tartness and then it kind of went away and now it's sort of like growing with time but it's it's really really easy to drink it's easy I mean, drinking it's only four percent Four point cent, four percent strawberry sour. I tell you what else I really like. Um, these beer ink cans have got a lot of information on the back of them. Um, so it tells you exactly what hops, yeast, and malt are used, and what adjuncts. So, um, and I have looked at all three of them. They all use Admiral hops. They all use dry American ale yeast, and then they've got a different malt bill and different adjuncts. So the strawberry sour uses Marisotta, oat malt, and acidulated malt, and then it's got actual strawberries in it well, if you're watching the video i'll show you the label it's, it's it is quite can. <laughs> and and laid out in a way that mm. really makes sense um so apparently they used over 100 kilos of strawberry puree so there is that carried on 1122 that that jamminess you were talking about is definitely it comes through in the taste yeah i, with that I agree acidity. Yeah, no, I would agree that. Oh, it is just really. I think if you like strawberry, and you like oh, that, yeah. that type of berry, um, and you like a little bit of tartness, I think it's quite nice. Like, I think even if you are if you're a person that doesn't normally drink sours, but you can tolerate a little bit of tart. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice, easy drinking. I'm gonna have some like cornetto. Though. Yeah, let's have some cornetto with it. So the cornetto for this one. I thought I'd kind of track where the Cornetto is coming to play for these films. So the okay. Cornetto is referenced in a scene where Simon Pegg's character, so like, like right at the beginning, um, where Simon Pegg's char- uh, character, Sean, buys a strawberry Cornetto for his friend, Ed, after he's hung over from a night of heavy drinking. And uh, the reference uh, you've got read on you is basically like kind of <laughs> throughout the start of the film, um, people keep pointing out to Sean as he's walking through, living his life, um, that he's got a red ink stain on him and um, by the end of it that that red that he's got on him is blood spoiler <laughs> alert spoiler alert in case you weren't sure. spoiler alert zombie um, film it's blood <laughs> have have a little lick of the um strawberry look sauce that. before i do look at that pink if you're watching yeah. the video like the actual beautiful pink ice cream there the strawberry sauce uh, for those that don't know what strawberry cornetto is sugar cone mm. vanilla vanilla ice cream strawberry sauce on the top and then strawberry ice cream in it as well and then of course the inside of the cone is has a layer of chocolate on it to stop it from going soggy and there's white chocolate curls on top now i think if you taste that strawberry sauce on top it tastes like the beer i'd agree yeah so i think they've done it a does good job with that one it does actually right? yeah. i think they've done a good job of that it feels weird to be ice eating ice cream at like <laughs> lunchtime but yeah we're doing this on a lunchtime Dear listeners, so we're having cornettos for for lunch. I can't believe I'm going to eat three cornettos. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is not the way that I eat cornettos. So, How do you eat a cornetto? So when <laughs> I feel like very, I've got additional questions now. I have a very specific way that I eat a, a cornetto. I will get rid of the chocolate, like I'll I'll lick off the chocolate that comes because there's always like that little bit of chocolate up the side that's come from the cone, right? 
I get rid of that first. Then I don't bite the ice cream. I lick the ice cream to get rid of it. And then once I've got down the top bits done, then I can bite a little bit of the cone off and gradually work my way down. I don't think I've ever really thought about how I don't bite the ice cream because th- then you get through it quicker. That's I... true. I normally lick ice cream, but in this scenario where I'm just trying to sort of, well, I'm just trying to try some... a bit of it. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm biting like, this it. is not. I was like, but this is, feels weird because it's not how I eat a cornetto mm. or a cone ice cream. I would say like a cone ice cream in general. It's not. I don't yeah. have a that that like sure vanilla ice cream is so like Mr. Whippy vanilla. <laughs> Well, it is Walls, which is the brand. It isn't. Well, see, I didn't know that. I only ever, like, found out about Mr. Whippy after I've moved to this country. And, like, I didn't realise that it could be such a different flavour of vanilla to just normal vanilla. <laughs> so, fun fact. I don't... I, I think I've mentioned this before, that my granddad used to be an... Well, my granddad was an ice cream man when he was alive. Yeah, yeah, you have. My uncle is still an ice cream man. My first Ooh. job. Uh, ice cream was working, man. was working on an ice cream van um so with you know mr whippy machine um so my family would modify the machine and add in um uh, a piece of tubing from an aquarium what <laughs> i'm trying to math out how this is gonna play because out because it adds more air to the mix so, right, so okay. if you've had some, it can be it can be quite dense that ice cream when you have it out of a yeah. machine. Yeah, it's weird because it's like light but also yeah heavy at the same time. <laughs> so we've got a way. I don't know how it's done. I just know that this is what they do. They modify the machine so it adds more air to it and it makes it lighter. Okay. And um, so there's this thing from when we were kids, like we'd go because. Uh, Buying ice cream when I was a kid was just like, what do you mean I got to pay for an ice cream? Like, <laughs> like I get this for free. Right, I just go to granddad's and get an ice cream. What, you get ridiculous. sick of ice cream though. We were the official tasters. So if he had anything new, he's like, yeah, this is new. Try that. Should I get that on, on the on the van? Surely um, you'd grow to hate it though. Oh no, because there's so many different things that you can have. <laughs> and you get exactly what you want because it's, because, mm. you know, although I could never convince them to stock sugar cones what are sugar cones these ones oh usual so like, cones, like the usual cones on the van cone. a bit more yeah waffle cone so they wouldn't I have don't these like they the just other... have the I foam like yeah the ones. kind of foamy ones, foamy ones. <laughs> yeah the worst kind of cone yeah. in my opinion i said what um, i said and i don't take it back it's literally well awful these are my favorite and i always wanted a waffle cone i always wanted them to stock waffle cones but they're more expensive so <laughs> do it hmm. um so better uh, ingredients so better quality i mean everyone else enjoyed them fine so it was just <laughs> but uh, but uh yeah so it comes out lighter and like we'd go places and we'd like get an ice cream and my granddad would be like need more air in that mate <laughs> that's like so interesting how did he learn how to do that i don't know like he started off working on a bread van delivering bread a bread and van that's the thing a bread well back in like this is my granddad, like back in like the fifties. <laughs> you worked on well, bread like, van. You know that there's like a milk, like a milk delivery. Yeah, like stuff. I didn't know there was like bread. a bread van. Yeah, you should deliver bread. And then someone was like, "Oh, what about an ice cream van? Why don't we do not like, get into ice cream vans?" And so they did. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. I think this vanilla ice cream, not the vanilla, the strawberry ice cream, does have that. Like, when you actually get to this strawberry ice cream, yeah, it's got it also is very. It. It has that tang to it, yeah, for sure. Um, and that jammy, like almost that jammy strawberryness. And also, I think when you have when you pair them together, it almost brings out the sharp tartness in the sour. It makes it like more tart. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I don't want to put it in your head, but but also I do. Oh yeah, it's because it's getting because you've had a lot of sweetness. From the ice cream, it's taking away the sweetness in the beer, so but not like, but yeah, not in a negative way. Then, as a person that likes sours, it then cuts like through that. the creaminess and the sweetness of of the ice cream. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like, mm. as a person that likes um, sharp, 
you know sours and tart sours um for me I like that if you're a person that is not I think while the beer itself could be quite good for someone that's trying to get more into sours if you're a person that doesn't really enjoy sours definitely don't mix the two (laughs) because I think that maybe you won't like the sharpness you're getting from that I'm really enjoying eating this ice cream with the beer (laughs) but also I'm just really enjoyable recording a podcast and I'm just like I'm just eating a cornetto just eating a cornetto drinking a beer we're living the life living the high life for sure um and basically i guess that they that what's really cool so we're doing this but they did do an event that they had announced it around may um with the events happening around like from halloween and into november launching across like numerous bottle shops in different locations where they were screening the films and you'd get a free cornetto to enjoy with it and there was the beer there to enjoy on tap and um yeah i just thought like that's like something really innovative that in a, in a way that like to make a, a beer that that pairs with a film mm. and a cornetto and then like rolling that out to shops to screen the film and get to drink the beer at the same time like that's I think I think it's quite cool I think it's quite a cool idea did you have like when you were at the cinema as a kid was it was popcorn more popular than like having an ice cream at the cinema I can't say that having an ice cream at the cinema was ever a thing. Mm. I maybe here. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, and like it's just where I'm from, and maybe it was different other places. But popcorn for me, and like chocolate and stuff, like snackable chocolates, is for me what cinema snacks are. And it really wasn't until I came here that I think I know, like that I'd ever seen an ice cream counter at a cinema, and I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. But well, cool. when I was a kid. They used to stop the film in the middle and you'd have an interval and what? or yeah, or they'd have like a little film at the beginning and then there'd be an interval before the film. And someone would come out with a little tray and you get little tubs of ice cream. I feel like I feel like Do that at the theatre as well. Isn't that at the theatre? Maybe I'm confusing it's happened at the theatre, yes. Maybe I'm confusing my memories of what you're saying with like going to the theatre versus cinema. But I feel like maybe we had, maybe I was in situations where there were people walking around the cinema when I was really young, mm. selling the like the chocolate, like the boxes of like yeah. Buncha Crunch and Raisinets and all those things that you could like buy that instead of leaving the cinema. But definitely not a break halfway through and definitely not really ice cream as far as I can remember. It was very much, and no drinks, it was very much like the boxes of chocolates or snacks yeah. or something or popcorn. No, I remember that as a kid. Mm. Also, talking about um, again, we're not a not a film podcast. Blurring the lines today. Um, I went and saw one of the Iron Man films. Can't remember whether it was the second one. Or we're, the a film one. We're, a film we're a film podcast now. We're a film podcast. We're film. We're I went and saw <laughs> film podcast. I was on. I was on cruise ships when it came out. A woman's my... view. A woman's view. A woman's sorry. view. <laughs> Spin up. Sorry. 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 Carry on. <laughs> carry on i couldn't not like i couldn't hold that one i was gonna forget it <laughs> and uh it came out while i was on ships me and a friend went to go see it while we were in izmir in turkey mm. um it's it the cinema. when we started off there was literally no one in the cinema but me and her we were just like private cinema yeah um then another couple came in and we were like oh no longer private cinema but <laughs> um, and, and we were watching it and it was getting to like a really like crucial part like something dramatic's happening and the film just stops. And we were like, what is happening? Like, what is it broken? What's happened? And it just went black, like just turned it off. The lights came on and they just stopped it <laughs> for like five minutes. And like, we turned around to the couple. We were like, is this normal? Like, is this not? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> there's just like an interval. And then no signs or anything. No sign, nothing. It just went black. It just stopped. Like the reels broken. A point where it like made sense to stop it. They literally just switched it off. Lights came up. Lights went back down, and they played it again. And we were like, "That was so weird." And it was in like a really like dramatic scene. And you were like, "What's going to happen? Why have they turned the film off?" It was really weird. That is that is really bizarre. Was the so film weird. was the film in like Turkish or was it in? No. It was in English. Impression. If you want us to do a spin-off, <laughs> Women's View, <laughs> where we talk about 
film and TV. Mm. I could easily do that. More than happy to do that. Should we do some bonus episodes where we like watch some TV and drink a beer? Pair it with. Mm. Do our own pairings that are not, uh, maybe not necessarily specific. I don't know. <laughs> like that. Welcome to a woman's <laughs> view. I could literally talk about women like, so, watch TV oh God, and we, drink beer. We, we, uh, we talk about films and TV now. <laughs> Welcome to a women's view. <laughs> I like that. Here we go. We just birthed something totally new. Amazing. This pairing is really good. It's so good. And I forget how much I read because it's been winter months and it's like not really ice cream time in the UK. Weirdly, I feel like ice cream culture in the US, 100% year round because you do have like ice cream shops. Yeah. And you would, when I say year round, it's not like as overt as like, I'm just happened to go to an ice cream shop and some of them do shut for the winter. But you do have like dedicated ice cream parlors and stuff like that, which I feel like isn't as big here. Or when you do have them, it tends to all be like the similar like Cornish ice cream and you get the same, like it's not like that in the US. Yeah, like no, we don't more have more of an ice cream culture there. Ice cream shops like you do. Yeah, I miss ice cream shops properly. But also over here, it's like you have like three or four months like max to eat ice creams before you feel like it just isn't appropriate anymore. Um, so I forget how much I really just enjoy eating an ice cream cone. Yeah. One of the things I had to do the first time I ever went to the US was go to an ice cream shop. I don't think I went to a proper one, though. We did it while we were in Vegas. <laughs> it was like Baskin Robbins or something. No, it wasn't. It was on the strip, though, so. Hot fudge. That's what I miss is like actual, mm. actual hot, hot fudge. fudge. Like proper hot fudge. That's a very American thing. Yeah, and it's so good. You get stuff over here, it's like chocolate sauce, and you're like, no, 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 that's not hot fudge. That's not hot fudge. It's not the same thing. I'm also a massive fan of Cold Stone. Mm, Cold Stone's good. Mm. Not the beers from um, Top Rope. <laughs> also the good. The ice cream parlor. <laughs> <laughs> My granddad was still alive when um, the first time I went to a Cold Stone and I took pictures and took it back to him and I was like, granddad, look at this. Like, I went into this ice cream shop. I was like, they give scoops. And then they put stuff in it. Like you can choose like sweets or chocolates or whatever to go in it. I was like, and then they cut it up on a cold stone and serve it to you. And he was like, we're not doing that in the van. <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, and then when you tip them, they sing. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. I've never like done that. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm 100% sure that. Well, I'm going to say, let me Google that. Because I'm, I'm going <laughs> to say I'm 100% sure. I'm going to look up their singing policy. Yeah. The singing policy. Yes, yes. Cold Stone Creamery on Twitter. I'm I'm literally pulling up the tweet from Cold Stone Creamery. We're now also an ice cream podcast. We're an ice cream podcast now. I don't know. I can't I can't make a good pun for that. I'm like really a, a woman's it. scoop doesn't a feel, woman's scoop doesn't work. Doesn't I'm really work. Somewhere. Um that feels like a stretch. Like mm. it's not as natural as a woman's view. No. Um We'll, we'll get there. Um, a, a woman's moo. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm being that one. Oh, dairy products. <laughs> dairy products. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, well, that's that's workshop. That's being workshop. But yeah, cold stone creamery. Thanks for reaching out. Singing when tipped is part of our culture and is one of the things that sets us apart from other ice cream companies. Singing is also part of the interview process to work at cold stone creamery. However, you can request they don't sing when tipped. How did I not know this? I would have totally tipped them. And made well, you should have tipped it. them anyways, Joanne. You should have tipped them anyways. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you wouldn't have known because like here you could go to a shop and not tip. Yeah. When you're there, if you don't tip, you really feel like an actual I never tipped in. No one told asshole. me I was supposed to tip in, in Cold Stone. Oh, no, you just tip everywhere there. Like even if it's like a few, like even if it's like 50 cents or whatever because that's your change you just go just take the rest of my change because it just you feel well, like even if i'm just people. buying a tub and walking out with it really uh, I've never, I've never, i don't think i've ever sat in at okay cold stone. i've maybe, always taken away maybe different if you're taken away and it's not just cold stone i would say like any plate like coffee shops like oh yeah no like, like if i'm sitting down tip it no but even if you're getting like a takeaway like even like i can't even tell you the amount of times at Dunkin' donuts you get a coffee 
you pay but this was to be fair it was more like cash really? culture then as well so like you'd be paying with cash and more, more so than a card why and... can't people just be paid a, a living wage uh, yeah that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole separate issue that's a whole separate issue in, in and of itself but like tipping culture in the u.s is like ridiculous like i remember getting a tattoo over because i tried to be really and careful I was about like, it because i know I, it's a thing i said to rick when i was over here i was like oh and i was getting my tattoo done i was like oh my first one like we have to like tip them right and stuff and he's like oh we don't really like tip tattoo artists over here i was like do you not and he's like no so i went they oh it's gonna be how much you got price, and then you, you have it. to pay that and and that's exactly what he said and i was like oh that feels like that so feel like right. ingrained and he's like, in your being right? yeah and he was like no they, they make a living wage they don't yeah, <laughs> like, they, yeah they we pay people what they're that. worth i mean not everywhere well, some oh, places i was gonna shit. say i was gonna but, say you know, oh, in the good places in the good places which are the places we should be we should be frequenting we pay people living wage. Like. I remember the first time I came to visit, it was either when I first came to visit or when I first actually moved here yeah. and we were at like Las Iguanas or something. And I literally bought like a jar of, like you'd buy a jar of sangria that you'd, yeah, like yeah. a whole jug of sangria and then you'd go back and like, drink it. And I remember like buying it at the bar because this is when you'd have to go to the bar to order it as right. opposed to like, it was like late enough in the evening where you'd just be sitting for drinks. Yeah. So I did that and I kind of just like left my change, not all of my change, but I left like some did they bring it back coin to you? because I wasn't really used to having like yeah. a full pound as like, a, like a coin, like coins yeah. to me were like, oh, I can do without that. Yeah. And I think I left like, I don't know, two or three pound coins there or something. And like, Rick was like, no. And no, he, we're and taking he, like, that back. And he took it and I was like, what like that's like exceptional top tier service yeah like, I was like, like why are you taking I was like why are you yeah, taking no. this tip away and he's like oh we don't no. like tip like that and to be fair as well I know things have like slightly changed as well but yeah and you know cost of living isn't you know not everyone gets paid for all that this is all like think about this like 10 years ago yeah. And it was literally like, I'm like, oh, what do you mean you don't just like leave your change behind? And he's like, those, that's money. He's like, that is like a, that's like a pound. And he's yeah. like, you take that. And he's like, it's not table service. You went up to the bar and he goes, yeah. it's not going to, A, it's not going to get you better service, which I think a lot of Americans think like, oh, yeah. tip to get to, you know, that's how you get better service or whatever. Uh, he's like, it doesn't do that. And he's like, and you know, they don't, it, he'll take it, but they don't really, that's not a thing that we do. Right. And I was like, oh. <laughs> We're also not a podcast about <laughs> <We're> so... <laughs> about tipping culture, apparently. And, I mean, tipping um, culture does, can relate to what we talk about, so it's fine. It can, but basically, the long and short of all of that was just to say, if you tip at Coldstone Creamery, they sing. Well, I did not know that. <laughs> Next time you're in Coldstone, I'm tip. the arsehole that went to Coldstone a lot and never tipped because <laughs> I didn't know I had to do that. Oh, yeah. well. Anyways, shall we, we move next on beer? to our next one, which is yes. going to be Hot Fuzz. And before we get the Cornettos out and start pouring that beer, I will give you the uh, synopsis of this one, which is as a former London constable, Nicholas Angel, who's Simon Pegg, finds it difficult to adapt to his new assignment in the sleepy British village of Sanford. Not only does he miss the excitement of the big city, but he also has a well-meaning oaf nick frost for a partner however when the se- when a series of grisly accidents rock sanford nick smells something rotten in the idyllic village i don't really want to spoiler alert it so i've done my level best as well to like talk about when this is referenced without giving away yeah <laughs> so we'll see how that goes but um let's go get the next cornetto all right so we have now got this smells good so nutty uh it smells like a cornetto <laughs> It smells so nutty. Before we've even talked about it. Right, so this is The Greater Good, which goes with Hot Fuzz, as we said, vanilla and hazelnut white stout. Um, uh, And it is to go with the Classico. But I'm not going to lie to you, again, it's not. If you're looking at the video, again, it's not quite looking I'm telling you, these as are clean. Sh- I think it's because stock photos. They have to be stock photos, yeah, pre them pre it be the top Squished. being mushed on if that yeah. makes sense because uh that looks a lot more fluffy and yes. everything else you've got a lot of chocolate sauce on the top of yours as well i am loving it i'm okay <laughs> with that actually yeah so um, this beer smells like a cornetto like i can smell the waffle cone i just smell nuts i can smell stuff. the vanilla i can smell the hazelnuts like it's the hazelnut for me it's like yeah. a meat like the first thing that you'll hit with is immediately like hazelnut for me do you know what so going back, I'm, I'm going to have to reference my, um, I'm going to have to reference my ice cream van days 
patent pending times. for our ice cream content. <laughs> yeah. Not sure the name yet. Um, <laughs> um, this also smells like when I would like because you have all the toppings on the ice cream man right so you'd have a box of nuts and it smells like the box of nuts on the ice cream van like all that, crushed up ready to just be like dumped on top of an ice cream that's what, exactly, like. yeah, that's what it smells like like 100 yeah. percent. and i think like because vanilla can be a little bit more subtle it's like there but it's so light in the background because yeah. yeah the adjuncts in this one vanilla cacao nib and hazelnut flavoring which yeah if i would never question the hazelnut <laughs> in this um it's very yellow in color but it's almost clear it's almost bright and clear yeah it's like something it's, suspended in there that's making it not quite 100 percent clear but i would say the way i kind of describe it it's like you can see on the other side but it's quite distort it like there's a distortion to it um so it's just enough where it's like if you put your hand behind it it would be a little bit distorted and be a bit of a shadow yeah. but it smells gorgeous so six percent uh chocolate vanilla and hazelnut white stout um so the cornetto is referenced numerous times uh like numerous scenes across the film um either like a character purchasing a cone from a convenience store or a rapper just you know appears on screen you know falling from someone's pocket or something they were pushing Um, it hard for those three cornettos (laughs) So they were like the cornettos cornettos <laughs> um and then the reference i'm gonna try to do this without giving any real spoilers away uh it's a quote from the neighborhood watch and it's used numerous you know n- numerous people kind of say this phrase uh without giving more context away um it's just a phrase that the neighborhood watch used Okay. The great, the great good, <laughs> and I really like again because of the way that I gave the synopsis. Like I feel like if you've not seen Hot Fuzz, I mean, I'm first of all, I'm shocked. What are you? What films are you watching? Just let me know. Um, but also, I feel like hopefully some of it, like some of that mystery, <laughs> will make you be like, I'm interested. Ooh, in What's happening? I'm gonna find out. But I'm drinking it. Me too. I can't just sit here huffing it doesn't taste as nutty immediately as i thought from the smell that's like my first immediate reaction i do get the nuts and i do get the waffle cone in it though no completely but it's um i think like the aroma of the nut is so oh it's very so strong very strong i was kind of immediately expecting like hazelnut but actually it's not it's a little bit more subtle undertone to it that kind of like lingers after you finish the sip it's not as sweet as i thought it might yeah, be yeah I, th- I think i'd like it to be a little bit sweeter i'd like a little bit more vanilla and i'd like a little bit more body i was just i was gonna say it's um for me it's like a little bit thinner than i would like for yeah. the for the flavor profile there or and what they're trying to what they were achieving for me it's just a little bit on the thinner side but yeah it's uh, the smell of it like i feel like i could put that into a candle yeah um, so the candy. malts used in this one were extra pale oat malt and flaked barley and then the adjuncts were vanilla cacao nibs and hazelnut flavoring yeah i think it really is that hazelnut does sort of come towards the yeah. back end of the sip and that like sticks around the longest so but then i think i'm very um vanilla for me like plain i think you do get that like you do get something that's just not as sweet but yeah for me vanilla is a bit like oh like vanilla ice cream for me is boring i'm gonna oh, say I like, every now and then i like a bit of vanilla ice cream i think that's the, what i avoid really vanilla. i love flaves no. joe i know you do <laughs> i don't have all them flaves and what am i even doing <laughs> what am i even doing oh i've got a lot of ice uh, chocolate on mine as well actually oh, i better open all right watch the video here's, here's what the chocolate looks like do you, are you struggling to get those off do you not just start at the bottom and open up the whole side oh and, no. And no yeah start at the bottom no. start at the bottom no nope. then you can unwrap no nope. the whole nope. piece no i don't want to wrap unwrap the whole piece why you're just making it difficult for yourself no i just like doing it little by little because i don't like what it like if the bottom's cracked or something in there so well, that's why you open it at the bottom because then you can check and make sure it doesn't fall off yeah but then if it is it's too late well, it's too, like, well i mean it. it's gonna be too late anyway because that means somebody chucked it around in the shop it's fine i like it this way well, i mean it it's vanilla ice cream it's fine <laughs> the top's gonna obviously be my favorite because that's where the nuts and the chocolate are
I think that nut is very similar. That hazelnut is very similar to like yeah. the back end of the taste of the beer. Yeah. Are you get more of the nuttiness if you eat if you drink the beer while you've had some of the ice cream? I wonder what happens once you've had the ice cream and then you have the beer and when you've had the top layer already. Is it the nuts that's bringing it out or the vanilla mm. ice cream? I'll find out in a minute. It's like the, it feels weird to say this, but the vanilla ice cream almost tastes buttery. <laughs> Not the beer, the, the, the actual yeah, yeah. Cornetto no, ice cream. I know cream. what you mean. Mm. I feel like it's quite subtle. Like this is not like Madagascan vanilla or anything like that, you know. I'm bougie. I like Madagascan. Right, it's not, <laughs> it's not bougie vanilla. This is just like your bog standard vanilla. Let me try a bit. Hold on. Get a little bit more just vanilla in the mix here. For science. Hmm. I asked Rick if he wanted to try the beer while I was getting the Cornetto. And he said he'd rather have the Cornetto. He's like, I like a Cornetto. Not that he doesn't like beer, but he's like, I'd rather have the Cornetto. And I was like, Ooh. well, you can't. But he might be able to have this one because I'm it's just too meh for me. That's interesting. So he'd, he, he'll he go for a Cornetto for um, empty, cal- en- empty calories. If he's going to go empty calories, he's probably going to go with the Cornetto. Really? It Dep- uh, depends on the beer. I think it depends on the beer. Like if it was something that he didn't really know, I just went, do you want some of this? So then he went, I'd rather have the Cornetto. But he didn't actually look at what it was. Mm. And then he had a sip of it. Um, no, I think the vanilla is still, just the vanilla is still bringing out a little bit more of the nuttiness. It's not just having the nuts on top of it. Mm. That's nice. Hmm. I don't mind it paired together. I think strawberry cornetto and the strawberry beer was my fave combo so far. I like, um, I just grabbed a bit of the cone and I really like the cone with this one the most, mm. I think. Hmm. I just find Classico is very like, in general, it's just like, meh. They're simple. Mm. I don't do anything simple. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I've got grandiose, bougie ideas. Mm. Maybe if they made it Madagascan vanilla, I would be like, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> so I'd say the only time I really have like vanilla is if I'm having a chocolate, like a hot chocolate brownie, and I want that vanilla to counterbalance like the rich chocolate. Right. But I 100, you, you got my number. I 100% buy Madagascan vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I don't oh, no, just yeah, get like yeah. normal vanilla. I'm like, we need the map gas in one though. <clears throat> About clotted cream vanilla. <clears throat> mm, I probably would have that. I've never tried it before, I don't think. Never had clotted cream vanilla. Either. No, because my default just goes like oh. Madagascar. Bougie. I don't really look around. Oh, try some clotted cream stuff. It's good stuff. I might have had clotted cream ice cream, just not vanilla. Mm. That's one that I think you tend to get, like when you go to all these ice cream selling places here it'll be like cornish clotted cream ice cream and the flavors aren't as exciting as american flavors i'm not gonna lie to you yeah we don't stuff 500 things in it that's what makes it the best though if you're like do i want something that's got like like even ben and jerry's and the like ben and jerry's over here good ben and jerry's in the u.s so like that's a world of flavors like Yum, Apollo ice cream. Yeah, and I'm l- literally not mad about it because <laughs> there's so many flavor combinations, and it's like, oh, the best one is like they've got they had one that was peanut butter ice cream with like various types of cookie dough in it, and I think there was like pretzel in it. <sighs> I think it was called the Tonight Dough, was the one that I'm thinking of. I'm googling this now because I it was it was life changing. We might get that one over here. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to do so much editing. <laughs> Save it for our dairy podcast episode. <laughs> the tonight dough: caramel and chocolate ice creams with chocolate cookie swirls and gobs of chocolate chip cookie dough and peanut butter cookie dough. I was oh. like, hell yeah! 
make my day Ben and Jerry's my I went favorite. to the Ben and Jerry's place and it is actually proper amazing. You get to like do a take like a taste test of it. It's like when you go to a brewery tour and you get to taste test the uh the beer, you get to taste test their ice cream. It was great. And they have um an ice cream graveyard, which is all the ice creams they've retired, and they have like little <laughs> headstones oh. for them. It's really good. If you're in um I think it's Vermont, if you're in Vermont, definitely go to the Ben and Jerry's ice cream factory. It's great. My favorite Ben and Jerry's was I think it was called One Sweet World. And it was coffee ice cream. Mm. And I think it had caramel, marshmallow, and chocolate pieces in it, I think. <laughs> or might have mm. been chocolate brownie pieces. It was good. They don't make it anymore. I don't, well, I've not seen it over here in, in a long time, so I don't think they do It's it hard because occasionally you'll get a flavour. <clears throat> Very limited time. And you have to get it someplace like Waitrose or M&S or yeah. someplace that's like not just a standard supermarket. I had a pumpkin cheesecake one from them once. Mm, that one was amazing. Yeah. You could get that at Tesco, I think. Yeah, and I think I bought like three tubs because it was limited edition. I'm like, that's what budget I'm as well. Out. And it only happened one year, and we never got mm. it again. It was great. Never seen it again. Cool. I think because we could have had pumpkin the rest of this because I've had ice pumpkin ice cream in the US. I was like, oh my god, pumpkin ice cream in the UK. Give me all the pumpkin ice cream. Just pumpkin ice cream full stop, really. Hmm. Huh. This one, I don't think is my favourite because I just think, like, for me, I like complex flavours. And I think, for me, the flavours aren't as complex in it as, like, with some of the other some of the other ones. And just for me, it's probably my least favourite Cornetto as well. So I don't think it's really there for... I think it's more... I think it's a good take me. on a Cornetto and a beer, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think for that, that's good. But I think when I compare it to, like, the strawberry yeah. one, I'm just like, oh, I like that the strawberry great. one better. Yeah. yeah. Be interesting to see how it stacks up against the mint, though. Yes. All right, final beer. We're now on to what the beep does WTF mean? So I just went and made Rick very happy with uh, the last Cornetto, and I'm yeah. really excited. This one I'm probably not going to share because I really <laughs> like this. It's the mint chocolate chip one. Um, but before we drink the beer, the synopsis for World's End is Gary King, Simon Pegg, is an immature 40-year-old who's dying to take another stab at an epic pub crawl that he last attempted 20 years earlier. He drags his reluctant buddies back to their hometown and sets out for a night of heavy drinking as they make their way towards their ultimate destination, the Fable World's End pub, which is also a place in Camden. Um, Gary and his friends attempt to reconcile the past and present. However, the real struggle is for the future when their journey turns into a battle for mankind i feel like this is the most beer related film like it is like, arguably the most beer beer related film. <laughs> it's the one that we should celebrate the most yeah no absolutely it is definitely the most but you i mean you're biased because it is your favorite, it's my favorite. But i would agree with you i would agree with you that yes that probably is the most is beer themed yeah um we can all get get behind an epic pub crawl for yeah. sure um yeah eight percent mint chocolate chip stout i've already poured I can, mine I can smell it smells it. like it i love it so much it really actually so my problem is i've had a lot of mint chocolate chip or mint stouts before mint yeah. chocolate stouts before and the problem is like it tends to be you just don't usually get enough of the mint and then also it's not enough of the mint but also at a sacrifice and detriment to the chocolate right um i'm really hoping this is different i haven't tried it yet but smelling it it so literally minty. smells like an after eight. It does smell. I was going to say that it smells like an after eight. Now I'm going to preface this. I don't like mint. <laughs> I do and like I mint, tend, and I, I like to avoid. <laughs> I use tend to avoid mint, mint beers, mint chocolate beers, mint chocolate. I avoid it, but I'm doing this for you, listeners. <laughs> I've gone in. I've gone in on mine. Yeah, it's definitely minty. It's not as chocolate as I want, but the mint is there. Yeah. I will say, if you're a person that I think a lot of the gripes that I have um, heard about mint chocolate ice cream, and maybe you can back this up and kind of say what you don't like about it, but a lot of the comments I've seen is very much like tastes like toothpaste. Like if it's pulled off, it tastes like toothpaste. Yeah. What like for you? What is it that you don't like about? Would you eat a mint chocolate in general? No. Is it just mint <laughs> chocolate beer you don't no, like? No, I don't like mint chocolate. I just I like I like mint. Um, I like so I I like mint on my new potatoes. I like mint chewing gum. 
um I'll have a mint like I wouldn't be like oh I'm gonna go out and buy some mints but you know if you know you're at a bougie restaurant and they offer you some mints at the end of the meal I'll have a mint you know I like I like a spearmint polo but I don't just mint's not a flavor for me because it reminds me of toothpaste I think like polos are that thing. <laughs> polos are that thing that are addictive. Though. Like if you see someone else having a polo, you're like, oh, I kind of want a polo. Like, <laughs> can I get one? At work, we have like we literally stock polos and really oh the most annoying thing in, yeah. Yeah, in our snack cupboard. And the most annoying thing is like when someone opens up and takes like a polo out and then puts the package back. We're like, just take the whole just package of polos. Just take the whole package of polos. It's like put it in your take... work drawer oh, for the oh, next and week. We, and we do it. that's what we do. And we're like, we don't know who's doing it. We just every so often we'll find it must be someone that's like visiting the office. Every so often we'll find like an open pack of polos that are just like there that have somewhere we're like just take the whole thing. Take the whole thing. <laughs> um and we get incensed about it. But anytime you see someone else popping a polo you're like oh, okay i need to i need to yeah. pop a polo myself specifically like. though spearmint polos are the ones that i like not the regular mint ones oh we just have the regular mint ones mm. but i like i like the regular regular have you ever ones. had um polo holes no what's that that was a thing for a while i don't what know whether it, was in, whether it was in the 90s or or elaborate <laughs> But it was like, so then they'd do, because, you know, obviously, polo. If people don't know what a polo is, it's a round mint, but it's got a hole in it, like a lifesaver. I think, yeah, that's the, if, if you're, so, you should, yeah. we do have them, I think, in the US, or at least similar. If yeah. you don't know what it is, yeah, lifesaver, but mint. Yeah. And um, so they were, they did a little gimmick where it was polo holes. So they were like tiny little round mints. As in like donut holes like, where it's like, the yeah, centre. Like they poked out the centre of the, of the polo and it, this is, oh okay i think we probably had similar but not it wasn't polos it was like a different yeah. brand that was basically identical and i want to say not like mentos it's not mentos it's something else that is like very similar to what that is but then we'd have like the little like a little box where you'd have like yeah and they came in ones. A, and they came in a little box and it was like little ones like and they were very tiny because it was supposed to be like the middle of the polo <laughs> bin popped out because you know that's how they make polos that's they how they make it's out, like right? it's like donuts yeah they just press the middle out yeah. and then they come push the perfectly. Middle out. yeah that's how they make them it's not how absolutely. they make them absolutely no let that <laughs> let the rumor mill start i like that um, um i like i this is nicer as i drink it i'm getting more of the coquette of the like cocoa i think for me Chocolate. i've let this yeah, been out of the fridge now for probably about an hour yeah thereabouts because it was it was in the fridge like yeah. pretty cold um I can understand. For me, it's not off-putting, at least not at the moment. Maybe as I keep drinking, it will change a bit. I can understand that mouth. What, like, I think if you're a person that doesn't like mint and beer and mint and stout specifically because it gives you that mouthwash, I think you probably, or the toothpaste, I think you yeah. probably are going to get this from it, yeah. at least initially. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, me, might it might be as you drink like, it. It tastes like toothpaste to me, but... But as I'm sipping more of it, I'm getting more of... The chocolate opens up a little bit more, I think. And I'm getting a little bit of, like, waffle cone in there. I'm getting a little bit of sweetness. Whether that's just because I've still got, you know, the taste of waffle cone in my mouth from the last Cornetto, I don't know. So so the Cornetto reference in this was very, very brief uh, uh, in this film. And <laughs> it's referenced as the rapper blows by and catches on a fence very very subtle but i guess they were kind of like we have to put the cornetto in it now because yeah. it's like this is our thing this is what we do do we know did they get cornettos for the premiere I, no they didn't no, i think it was really. basically a failed attempt and then they were kind <laughs> of like in it and they were like well it's the cornetto trilogy i feel like, we have to I do I that. Feel like wolves made a made a booby like they should have like carried that on <laughs> they should they should have that would have been absolutely great i don't even know if it was them that sort of like gave it to them for somebody else basically yeah. but somebody i don't know they had them for free and uh, as far as i'm aware this didn't carry on at all after the first one um but then the reference to what the f star 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 does wtf mean is reference to martin freeman's character saying w t f as he's like as they've just sort of like escaped from a thing uh, and Simon Pegg's character goes, "What the fuck does WTF mean?" <laughs> <laughs> that's basically funny. That's the scene. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they've they've put that on a can. I think that's a a great, uh, a really great scene to have picked out. Personally, again, I tried to do it with like no spoilers. It's just <laughs> that's it. Literally, I tried to be as literal as possible with with what the context of that was. Um, yeah, I think for this, the more it sort of sits there, the mint 
I quite like it because I, I like <laughs> you like, like mint. mint. I like yeah. mint and I like the cleanliness it feels that's in my mouth. And I think like when having a stout, sometimes it can be like really almost like thick and syrupy and, and all that. And, and sometimes it can feel like, like it's nice to have that little bit of like palate cleanse after with a mint. <laughs> I think this, that's beer's, me. this beer's got a nice body as well, Robin. Talking about mm. that. It's not too thick, but it's like it's it feels full. appropriate. Yeah, it feels, feels appro- appropriate. It feels appropriate for the flavor yeah. profile yeah. that it is and and how many flavors are in there. And this um, do we say it's eight percent? Eight percent. And then the adjuncts, I'll let you do the malt, but the yeah. adjuncts are the cacao nibs and mint flavoring. So they did use flavoring for yeah. it. I mean, I guess that's probably to mint's probably a tricky one where it's also probably one of those things like cinnamon, you either don't add enough or you yeah, a bet. little pinch and it's way too much. So yeah. So the malts, Maris Otter, oat malt, chocolate malt, roast wheat and black malt. You do get sort of a little bit of like, and I think it's partially potentially like the cacao coming into play here. And then, you know, yeah, it's almost a little bit of roastiness that's kind of like lurking underneath all the, the those like chocolatey flavor there. Um, and I think it's quite nice. And I think that roastiness almost kind of is for me what's replicating the cone yeah it's not it's not like like heavily roasty but i would still for me i still would use the term roasty compared to yeah, something else no, and for me that that's the corn uh, that's the cornetto um waffle cone yeah so i'm already i already started digging into the ice cream and i'm really excited i think we didn't say the beer is a beautiful color it's a lovely it is, yes. dark brown and it's got this really nice lingering like mocha head on it yeah gorge right again i do think it would be hit or miss like i, I feel like it yeah. is one that would be a hit or miss one in the sense of i don't i don't think it's one that if you aren't a fan of of mint in your stout that you're gonna suddenly like have a no. come to jesus moment so to speak and be like i see it i love it now like this isn't going to be the one that changes your mind i don't no. think <laughs> as a non-mint person this is not the beer that's gonna be I, don't, I, I was gonna say i don't think it's unfair to say no. and it's not a criticism of the no beer, the beer I, like if you like mint this is a nice beer i don't like mint i appreciate the beer for what it is it's a well-made beer i just don't like mint <laughs> i would like to know what it would taste like on tap though mm, yeah i know they sent it out in keg and in cask so there was some on cask Ooh, as well that's yeah. an interesting one um this this ice cream is bright green <laughs> It is indeed. I think, to be fair as well, I would argue, if we're looking at, if you're watching the video, yeah. again, this is probably, for me, the and I'm not saying this because I'm biased and this is my favourite one, this for me is the most accurate yeah. to the label. It's yeah. the least squished in a way, it's the least squished really, and it's the one that I just feel like... I mean, you're looking at your Cornetto label. Oh yeah, you? Sorry. And not your beer label. This one. But yeah. Um, for me, yeah, I grabbed the wrong they're so similar. I just grabbed yeah. the wrong one. Um, for me, that is probably the one that's like the most there's there's yeah. less things there that you can yeah get squished and wrong. I think yeah. the difference is is on these uh labels, the beer labels as opposed to the cornetto labels, it looks like it's chocolate sauce for both this one yeah. and the other. Chocolate sauce as opposed to like hard chocolate. Yeah. And the cornettos are hard chocolate in the in between. Yeah. But I think this is probably the cleanest presentation out of all of them. Just saying. Yeah. I mean it. Do you not like so you don't even like mint ice cream? That's like no, literally not your thing. I don't. So you know I'm doing this for science right now. Would Gordon eat it? No. <laughs> The thing is, I guess that's why I'm lucky. Like, Rick will just be either. like, Rick's not picky at all. He's like, Yeah, all right. I think and I left like him a nut as well. So he liked it. He was even more happy with that. It does taste like the beer. Yeah, it tastes exactly like it. But now this makes me think, sorry for the shitty ASMR, guys. <laughs> um, this does make me think, like, will this take away from the beer? You'll try. It does bring out bitterness. Yep. It brings out the bitterness it of the brings cacao. Up, yeah, and the roastiness more. That's okay. More so than I particularly like, because I don't... That bitterness for me is almost a little bit off-putting. Like, at uh, that level, because it feels yeah. like it sticks out a lot more than... Yeah, I don't know if I would... The other flavours? I don't think I would recommend Parent. eating the Cornetto with a beer. 
They don't draw no. away from the beer itself. Just don't pair it with the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Because it just brings out those those particular flavours. Yeah. In a way that doesn't feel like it's being balanced out. Yeah. I think the strawberry was the one that paired the best because mm. that one, what it took out of the my face. ice cream, and what it took out of the beer in terms of flavour, still felt like there was a balance there. I think with yeah. the other two, when you paired them, something happened where it still didn't feel like the beer was 100% balanced because it was pulling things out that were maybe not making it feel like it was yeah. right. I'd say this is the le- the least so being the mint. Yeah. The order that we had it in was probably the order that pairs best, to be fair, yeah, as well. I think interestingly. So. so we did have a bit of a mish finding these. I feel like while we're finishing this, it's quite, you know, the interesting thing to talk about. And I wonder if anyone else knows. So all these have, I think they all have, yeah, that they were canned on 1122. And obviously, yeah. as I said at the start, the series was announced that it was coming to fruition. Basically, I think... Gavin had wanted to do this for like quite a long time and finally it sort of came to fruition that he could do it um, and he was greenlit to do it and that was back in May with the event happening from Halloween and into November but these obviously weren't canned until November um, so we kind of started to think well we hadn't seen them they were being talked about we were hearing about the launch places that were the, you know the, the shops that were going to be launching it and the venues but we didn't see the beer and I was like hmm. I remember you being like I really want to find these but I don't know where well, to find them I've looked everywhere I'll let you explain it well I so I spoke to Gavin at Generation Craft um we were just having a chat and that the week before the weekend of Generation Craft um their bright tank had imploded <laughs> um so they they managed to get out they were going to get like that was the week before the launch week and um they managed to get out anything that was on cask they managed to get out to the venues and the um so they carried on and the film uh screenings carried on but anything that needed to be canned or kegged um had to wait until they got a new tank so they managed to get a tank in like a couple of weeks i think but that then delayed everything so then the kegs went out and then I remember seeing, because I was keeping an eye on it because I really wanted to try this trilogy, and they sent them out, and there was a list of bottle shops that were going to have them, and I was like, okay, so looking on launch day, had a look, they weren't on, like, it was like Trembling Madness were going to have it, um, Premier Hop were going to have it, a couple of other places, and I went on their websites, and they weren't up, and I was like, "Oh no, are these just going to be?" Because they were saying it's going to be a really limited run, like you know, you know, uh, fair, fair for this to be, you know, uh, an event and an occasion for these beers. Um, and I was like, "Oh no, maybe they're just going to be able to like purchase in store. You're not going to be able to actually get them online because there wasn't anybody near me that was going to have them." Um, so I was like, "Oh no, I don't know if we're going to be able to get these." And I told you about it, and I was like, oh, "I'm keeping an eye on it." And then I think I was looking for something else. I'm we're looking for like Christmas this. stuff, I think. Oh, we were looking for Christmas stuff. And I was like, da, 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 in the new beers was the set of these. And I was like, oh my goodness, we need to buy these. And we did. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> mm, yeah, absolutely. A bit of a mish. And I think a bit of a mish for the brewery as well, because they had so much trouble with their kit. Yeah, they mentioned something about, so with the Bright Tank leak, they basically said um, the leak was like going into the cooling jacket mm. and they said that basically if they were to do it if they were to use that at all it would implode if yeah. anyone doesn't know what like a bright tank is are you able to explain it yeah so it's the it's the tank that everything goes into like before it gets canned so you've got the fermenter where it all ferments and then you can transfer it uh, and then it can be transferred into a bright tank so that removes it from the yeast um and it can be like stored there to clean up and things like that um and to uh, and to carbonate it so if that's not working you can't carbonate your beer and then obviously you can't put it in keg and can because it's not carbonated whereas you can put it in cask because then a little bit of yeast is added back in so that it um recarbonates in the cask so they could send those ones out that was fine they couldn't carbonate the beer mm. because their bright tank wasn't wasn't working properly yeah that's uh it was unfortunate but they did bounce back and we did manage to get a beer and yeah. It was a fun experience. And-, and Gavin also said to me that um, they managed, I think they got a bigger one 
and they were looking to expand anyway. He's like, so kind of works out because we've ended up getting a it's a, a bit of unfortunate situation. Yeah, just, like you get to turn into a right, fortunate yeah. thing, I guess. Just while you're trying to do like a big launch, everything goes a little bit wrong. But it's fine. The beers came out. They're good beers. I recommend them. I think if you've never had beer ink for like the one that most yeah. people probably know about is it's the star beer. Star beer, it? yeah. I've had that. It was really yeah. nice. Have, yeah. you, have you had it? Yeah, I've had it. And it really does good. taste like a star bar. It does. I mean, I don't know, because I to be fair, I haven't had one before, but have you never reading... had a star bar? I only no. recently had a star bar. I had the reading beer what it's supposed to be. The bar. Reading what it's supposed to be and having the beer, I was like, this feels like that's probably pretty spot on. It was really yeah, it enjoyable. Does. I'd never had a star bar. I think they're called, I think they're more of a northern thing. I've never seen them down here. Mm. But I saw them in co-op the other like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, it's when I was buying the chocolates for our beer and candy pair. No, for our for um how was it the Halloween pairing? Was it the Halloween pairing? Yeah, Not I think then. it was when I was buying them for the Halloween pairing. I saw it then and I bought one and I was like, oh, I've never I'd never <laughs> seen one before. And I was like, I'm having that. And I it, I think it did taste like the beer. I think I, it tasted has how I imagined it probably would yeah. in that sense, and it was really good. It was really, and good. they make it vegan nowadays. So I think that's the thing that they that that most people will know. That's the beer that probably yeah. most people will recognize them from. But yeah, <clears throat> this is a they were a really good trilogy, and this Cornetto. Like I know that you don't like it, but I'm about to go out in a minute, and I feel like this is <laughs> I, I don't even need to brush my teeth. This is yeah, you're done. That's why I don't like mint. <laughs> minty fresh, I love it. It's so good. That's why so. I don't like mint. <laughs> Oh, anyways, this was really enjoyable. Yeah, this was fun. Um, so can recommend pairing beers with ice cream. Yeah, just be careful because they don't yeah. all make it better. Like, they don't all enhance. We're not going to guarantee that it's a good pairing, but it's uh, a fun but it experiment might be. to do. It might like, be. It might be. Part. You don't know. And that's the fun with beer and food pairing. And I'll just you say could that make something amazing. I think what's really key to highlight as well is like if it doesn't work. Like obviously, as we did, we tried the beer on its on its own first. Yeah. Enough sips that you kind of got the the feeling for it. Then we dove into the ice cream, and at the end of the day, if it doesn't pair well, then you just stop eating. Right. And you just drink. Like you I've just done drink the beer. I haven't eaten this. Yes, I haven't eaten this minted. And I didn't do it with my classico. Like I gave Rick my yeah. classico. So so that's fine. You can do it. Win win for everyone. Same with cheese. Same with sweet. Same with snacks. Same with any other food. Just eat them separately. Yeah. Or if don't. you've done if you've done the Cornetto yeah. trio or you went to one of the events, Ooh, let yeah. us know about it. I would like to hear about it and how it went down. I don't know if it was genuinely, I didn't know enough about, I couldn't find enough about to know if it was like literally all three films back to back to back on the same day or I if think, it was. I think um, some of them had all of them. I think Heist just had Shaun of the Dead on, on Halloween, like things like that. Yeah. If you went to any of the events, let us know because I'd be really keen to hear that. If you want to let me know, you can find me on Instagram. And adventures underscore in underscore optimism or you can email me at adventures in optimism at gmail.com or you can let joe and i both know on instagram at a woman's brew or better yet you can email us in at a woman's brew podcast at gmail.com and joe if they want to give you shit for not liking mint chocolate where can they talk to you i mean bring it on because you can just have <laughs> my mint chocolate instead that just means there's more mint chocolate for you it's true don't actually like, give a shit everyone's right, got different taste care. buds <laughs> I, I don't care like you have that that's cool um you can come and talk to me about my hatred of men <laughs> at uh, she my didn't beer know, school how she didn't know that cold stone will sing if they tip right you. and i didn't know that i didn't know nobody told me none of my american people i went with told me that i had to do that why didn't they tell me i rude. apologize i apologize to all the servers <laughs> that i bought ice cream from some of it was gift cards because people knew that i liked cold stone so they always gave me a gift card um <laughs> Anyway, you can talk to me about that at my beer school, which is Love Beer Learning, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Pinterest. I'm usually hanging out on Instagram and TikTok. Um, or you can come uh, to my website, which is lovebeerlearning.co.uk. I gave it a refresh the other week. It's looking very Ooh. snazzy. Uh, so come there. And I also have an email address where you can email me and talk to me there, which is lovebeerlearning at gmail.com. Right, so you're going to go out. You're still munching away on your Cornetto. <laughs> Finish my Cornetto. Finish these beers. So. My pre-game beers. And then I'm going to go out. On that note. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>